Kerbal Search is our answer to the old problem of having to move everything that you want to search before you can actually do anything with it, right? Um, this is an interesting stat from, from IDC, 64 zettabytes of data was created. Uh, we're keeping about 7% of that data today just because there's too much of it. Um, and that number continues to grow. The standard model of what does it look like to do search? What does it look like to do log analytics is, has always been, and, and this, is, this persists today. Even new companies that are introducing new products, the model is the same. Bring all of your data to one place, whether it's S3 or some proprietary format, and then you can do something with it. Even if that data is not valuable, you are paying for every byte you are bringing in for each of, the, each, uh, each of those data sources. So what we're doing with Cribble Search, we turned the agent model on its head with Cribble Edge we turned the, we basically flipped the entire story for how you collect all of this data with Kribble Stream and what you can do with it. And now we've done this effectively with search as well. So instead of having to move everything, this allows you to search data at the endpoint before you have to move it. So this lets you, as I mentioned earlier, this lets you find the needle in the haystack without having to move the whole haystack to your barn. It uses uh, an open source query language called Kusto, which uh, was developed at Microsoft. It's widely used within the Azure environment, so there's no proprietary language. And you can also use that language across each of the destinations, whether it's data at the edge, data flowing through the stream, or data at rest. And the user interface is going to be something that you're, you're familiar with, but it, we think it's a little bit more rich, uh, much more customizable. Um, better history capabilities and so on. Corey's gonna demonstrate some of that in a few minutes. Uh, this is only available in Kribble Cloud uh, today. So that's one thing to keep in mind, but this is something you can demonstrate or you can use today, kick the tires on and so on. So instead of the traditional model, this is the one thing to remember about Kribble Search. Instead of the traditional model of forward all your data, then search, this is very much search then forward for the interesting stuff. We talked to companies and they're like, they, when we were developing this product, they kind of came down in two camps, right? They were either really excited about being able to search data at the edge, right? Companies were like saying, I've got 150,000 Windows machines. I cannot afford to move all of that data. Just don't have that kind of budget. So being able to execute this search, and Edge does run on Linux and Windows, but being able to execute searches and find that needle and just move that, those interesting bits of data is a huge win for them. So many of them, about half were interested, highly interested in what we're doing at Edge. The other half was like, you know what, man, I got data everywhere. I've got it in hundreds of S3 buckets. Um, it's in all kinds of different tools that I'm, I'm using and, and struggling to maintain and develop skills for. Those people were very interested in, can I just search data right in S3 natively without having to reformat anything uh, or move it again in my existing tools? So those are the two motivations for Cribble Search. And this was just launched last week. Um, sometimes this thing works, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so what does this look like? Search your data before you have to centralize it. Uh, one of the key advantages, and then also, since we're seeing all of this data as it runs through Cribble Stream, being able to search on that data in the future, adding alerting capabilities and so on over it uh, is also a big win. And then finally, searching your data lake, um, ideally in an S3 environment, and we'll be adding more federation capabilities so you can reach into an elastic, you can reach into a Splunk. And so from one location with one query language, you're searching over all of your data, regardless of where it is, in the format or in the, in the mechanisms that make sense for you. All right, so the benefits. Um, give you access to stuff that you didn't have before. Right? If you couldn't afford to move all of that data, now you can leave it where it is and still get full value. Um, very, very easy to use. Uh, like all of our products, we, we eat our own dog food, right? We use these products internally, so it has to be easy for us to use as well. Um, you get to centralize or, or consolidate on skills also. So instead of having to learn 
eight different platforms or potentially 30 different platforms, there's one thing that you, you can learn. And that's an open source language that is not proprietary to Cribble. And eliminating a lot of worry and uncertainty. So being able to better scale your staff, right? We can, it's very, as Ed mentioned, it's very difficult to bring more people on. Uh, and so, and, and we're seeing a huge amount of churn today in cybersecurity. So this makes, this lowers the burden across the board. 